So I think, yeah, as you said, you've all signed up. Um, so we are, I'm a chartered accountant. I work for a local firm. We've got clients based on the Wirral, Cheshire, Manchester, Liverpool area. Um, so we're a practice of chartered accountants. So we are all accountants in the firm and we've got a group of clients that we do work for. So if you're a chartered accountant, you can either work in practice or in industry. So if you're in practice, you've got your client base that you all work for and they're all your customers. If you work in industry, you work in a business and you are an accountant in a business. So So you work in a business in the finance department with a team of most likely accountants or there's different qualifications of accountancy, there's a management accountant which is more in industry or like us where the chartered accountants which can be industry or practice. So um, our clients are in a variety of industries so we've got for example care, so we've got working with young and elderly, we've got engineering, we've got media production, they're just one of the few. Um, we do a variety of work, so tax work for business, personal, we'll do accounts, we'll do audit, if you know what audit is, it's checking accounts, and then just general assistance work, consultancy and whatnot. Um, we work with a variety of people, different backgrounds and interests, so that can make it quite interesting. You've got to respond to their personality, their behaviours, and make sure you're getting the best for them and understanding what their needs are. Um, so I myself went to West Kirby Grammar. So, So I went to West Kirby Grammar. Um, I did all school and sixth form there. Then went on to university and did a degree in math in the University of York. I then went on to do an apprenticeship to be a chartered accountant. There are more routes available now to go directly from school. That saves a lot of money. Um, you don't have the degree cost, you get paid while you work, you have a lot of your tuition paid for you, the company pays that and the government pays a lot of it as well. Um, so they're now a lot more available than I were when I was finishing school. Um, so it's definitely an opportunity you should look into. Um, Cost-wise, it is a no-brainer. You start earning a lot earlier than if you graduate, which would be at the age of 21, 22, compared to starting at 18. So as much as you would still be on a base training salary, you reach your, if you think of um, salaries, you increase over your working life, you come to a peak, and then you pretty much level out quite a lot towards the end so you basically just have more time at that level out stage because you level out quicker because you've started earlier so it's a lot more cost efficient um, work experience will help you a lot with your decision i'd highly recommend getting work experience if it's something you think you'll be interested in um, we offer experience and we offer apprenticeships as well erica being our latest addition to the team. Um, so yeah, do you want to take over from there? Yeah. So my name is Erica. I left Caldy last year. I studied maths, further maths, economics and physics and now I've moved on to an accountancy apprenticeship nearby. Um, so yeah, I am studying towards my CFAB qualification which is kind of like a stepping stone qualification to the chartered one. Um, I do six exams over the next like 12 to 18 months. I've done two so far. Um, so yeah, your CFAB is like the qualification you get at the end of the year. Um, I've compared it to like what you're doing at the moment, GCSE and then ICAW, which is kind of like what I'm working with is the equivalent of AQA. Obviously it's not the same, but it's just a comparison to make it a bit easier for you guys to understand. So yeah, I have to complete six exams. These are them here if you want to read it yourself. Um, they're 90 minute exams, 55% pass mark. And I've completed these two so far and I'm on the way to studying for this one. The exams at first I was a bit cautious about but honestly if you just revise then you'll be fine. I'm actually doing this one at the moment which is one you study yourself for outside of work but these two you go into a college which I'll go into more in a bit. Um, so yeah the CFAB is a lot slower pace than the 
ACA, which is what Jane did. So Jane went from university and did a quick paced apprenticeship to get qualified. Mine's a bit slower though, just so I can kind of get a grip with like what I'm doing. And obviously I'm going from 18, so I don't need to rush to become chartered. Um, so yeah, sorry. I study with the school, which is, yeah, that's my colour. Um, it's called Cat Plan, it's in Liverpool. So sometimes I go to Liverpool and I study in like a classroom like this. Um, so yeah, I go there, they teach me everything I need to know. I have a big book for everything. And then I can go on the website and I use all these resources to study for my exams. And there's absolutely tons there, you'll be fine, like finding what you need and mock exams and all the extra information. Everything's on there. So yeah, Catplan's really useful and you go in, you have a tutor in like a classroom of about 30 and you just learn what you need to know. Um, so yeah, day to day in the office, which is obviously where I'm at most of the time, um, I do these three things mainly. So account preparation is probably like the typical accountant job that you think of. It's taking a company's information, like their bank statements for example, and I look through that information to get like, the income and expenditure. Uh, just using Excel, I use Excel a lot, and then I put the information I found into a software which I'm trained on the job by my managers to be able to use myself. And that makes the financial statements at the end of it. Another job is bookkeeping which is where you basically like go through the transactions of the company, you put it into the software, which again, trains you use, and at the end it comes out with a VAT return, so it's basically just how much like VAT they owe at the end of that quarter. So they're the main jobs I do most of the time, and with every single client it's completely different. I work with like loads of different types of clients, um, as Jane said before. So it's not boring because you're doing something different every single day. You're learning like new things every single day and it's different for everything. And then the final thing I do is audits, which I've only done once so far, but obviously I've only been there less than six months. And this is different to just working in the office, like at your desk, you go to the client, you go out to their workplace and you kind of check what their accounts are by doing tests and check, like evaluate them. Sorry, it's okay. Um, so yeah, you evaluate what is on those accounts to see how accurate they are and you're there all week maybe, dependent on how big the order is and you look through it and you're with someone else and that's, that's really interesting because you get to meet new people, you get to see the clients, see where they're working. Um, so yeah, I've actually got one of them in a few weeks which I'm really excited for. Um, so yeah. So my support in work is really great for an apprenticeship, you need people guiding you through what you're doing, guiding you through you know, your qualification, I'm not just expected to handle it by myself. So in work I have my managers, for example Jane, she's like helping me on with, if I'm confused, you know, she helps me out and I've got another girl who's also an apprentice but a few years ahead, kind of teaching me what she's learned when she was my age. Um, the firm I work for is really small, there's only eight people, so obviously there's loads of benefits of that, you get that kind of one-to-one -one tuition, which is great. I know that I've like progressed so much more than I thought I would have in six months, like I can do stuff like the first day I was like, what is going on, and now I know a lot more. Um, so it's really nice, it's like a teamwork -y, like environment, you know, we chat, we get to meet new people and stuff but I also get to progress a lot because I have these people always at my side helping me out with everything and then my final thought of support is um, my talent coach so this isn't to do with my workplace this is actually to do with Cat Plan the school they assign a one-to-one -one person that I can kind of meet up with well, over Zoom every six or so weeks and she kind of guides me through the apprenticeship she tells me you know, what I need to work towards, how long this should take, and it kind of gives me a reference how long I should be expecting to complete stuff. So hopefully I should be completing my C5 qualification next December, which considering I started this September just gone, is pretty good going, and I kind of know what to expect at that level because she's planned it all out for me. I can obviously go to her with any other worries or anything as well, which I don't have. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's really useful to have there to kind of like guide me through the qualification so I know what to expect. <coughs> um, yes. So to track my progress with the apprenticeship, kind of see 
what I'm doing and also for like um, evidence that I've completed that obviously they're not watching you, the people who are like giving me my CFR qualification, I need to show what I'm doing. So I complete these two things, one with cap plan, um, which is off the job hours, so it's 20% of my working hours are off the job, which is basically when you learn, uh, like what you're learning, it's when I go to college, when I complete a software training day, like anything that type of thing is towards my off the job, and that has to be 20% of my working hours, which is about, I think, about 400 hours, which seems a lot, but you're working a whole year, so it's fine. Um, and I just like write a small description of what I did and how many hours it took me. Another thing is the ICAEW ladders. So I mentioned ICAEW before. It's kind of like... To so it stands for the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales. So there's different qualifications you can get. So it's, um, it's not exactly like, but it's kind of like you can have your GCSE or your A-level or your degree. Um, these are different types of qualifications in accountancy, one being with the ICAW, yeah. you get your chartered accountancy. There's one called CIMA, C-I-M-A, so that's the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, <laughs> I think. Um, and there's a couple of other ones you might have heard of. AAT is, um, a, <coughs> AAT is a bit more equivalent to what Eric is doing at the moment um, because you can split your... So when you finish school, you do what Erica's been talking about, the CFAB. So that is your 12 to 18 months um, that you're completing in December. You then go on to finish your ACA. So your CFAB is like a first step to being an ACA, a chartered accountant. And you then carry on to become a chartered accountant. So your CFAB is like your step where if you had gone to uni, you would have kind of started similar you progress quite quickly after that whereas your CFAB is instead of uni you're doing your CFAB and that will build you on to your ACA. Yeah and they're both with ICAW so that's kind of like yeah good to see yeah. So with ICAW they give ladders which me and Jane complete together and they have these like what makes an accountant the key areas and it's these here if if you want to read it yourself and we complete maybe four um, things and it says like when have you done this when have you done this we have to write examples of it so that's another way to track my progress we kind of write we just take time like whenever we're free maybe set like a little meeting do it ourselves and both the off the job hours and the lands all need to be completed to go towards my CFAB so that's another thing that kind of adds variety as well like instead of sitting and doing jobs all day like me and Jane will take time out and do our ladders and make sure that's getting completed. Um, so yeah, that's another way. It very much focuses the mind as well as to what you've been learning. So we'll go through each category and each requirement and work out has Erica achieved this, when has she achieved this, when has she demonstrated um, integrity or when has she observed confidentiality. Um, we'll think back and think, okay, well, in this situation, you had to be careful what you were saying. Um, you couldn't really, you know, talk about clients and specific client things. So that's observing confidentiality. So that's how you kind of focus what you've learned. Yeah, they're really useful, actually. Um, so, yeah, then the benefits of an apprenticeship, which is you know, obviously very important when you're comparing it to the other options you could go for. Um, so, obviously, the financial area of it you're earning from 18 I left school I went straight into earning um, this obviously is a good opportunity like you're going towards your pension I can think about you know buying a house in some years and or buying a car whatever you want to do you know you have the opportunity to spend your money spending it on what you want um, so yeah and then early exposure to clients so I am in the office and we obviously have meetings so my second day I was in taking notes for a meeting I'm seeing these people face to face, I'm kind of getting the experience of how to act in front of a client because I'm there, I'm doing it from 18, it's really useful. Um, so yeah, then the necessary qualification, obviously we mentioned this before, ACA, if you want to become a chartered accountant, you have to do that qualification whether you went to university or not. I'm skipping the four years of university, the four years of debt, which is like huge, um, and going straight into it. And 
I'm kind of getting that qualification as the first thing and just getting it done so then yeah I can level off quicker and kind of make that step quicker um, and then the kind of social side of it I'm meeting new people I'm like Jane and then when I go to audits I meet the people there I'm seeing new people I'm gaining new relationships and finally it's the free time it's great on weekends I don't need the stress of oh do I need a part-time job to work for this do I need to do this or this I have I work in the week and I have that spare time at the weekends to kind of be have the freedom especially with like you know I can go do what I want I can go see my friends at university and I have the whole weekend to do that and that's because you know I'm I'm going into work in the week I'm getting my qualification I'm earning a wage and then I'm free and it, it is really good I really enjoy that part of it um, so yeah, benefits of an apprenticeship, they're limitless, but that's my five top ones probably. Um, they're brilliant. So yeah, having left Coldy last year and having the same you know, contemplation that you guys will probably have in a few years, what do I do next year, what do I want to do, this is kind of my reflection just, you know, which might help you out um, how I found leaving Coldy from my A-levels, being at school, having like the school life, you know, very like, just in school at the time you have a structure, to then going and doing this apprenticeship, like how I found the difference. Um, and the transition was absolutely fine. I was worried at first, you know, I have to get myself up, I have to get to work, it's a job, it might be stressful, but it's so relaxed, like we go into the office, we make our way in there, and I, it's, it's just nice, like there's no pressure. If I'm struggling with something, I have the support, but I'm taught everything as well. I don't feel like I'm like pressured to do anything I can't do. Um, and even though you're working longer hours as well, you, it's fine. Like I feel school is like really, we've said this quite a bit actually. Yeah. School is quite like draining. You're Intense. learning all day and it can like be quite difficult. Whereas this, it's like, it's a lot more laid back and it's quite a nice job. Um, so yeah, don't be worried about like a big step because you'll be fine. I, I found it absolutely fine. Um, the comparison to uni work-wise, um, at first I thought, you know, my friends will be out partying all the time and I'll get the job, but honestly, it's like they have so much work and assignments as well. I don't feel like I've got loads more on. It feels very similar work-wise to my friends at university. So that was like quite a nice surprise that everyone has a lot to do, everyone has a lot of jobs and I just feel like I'm getting a really good qualification and I still get to go out and do fun things. So it's a really nice balance. And yeah, finally the independence. It's just so nice, you know, it's it's a change but it's not too huge. And I really like um, you know, get having a job and going the structure of it all. So yeah, it's really great. So overall I do really oh, sorry. I do really recommend an apprenticeship and everything about it is really, really great and yeah, love it. So Thank you, and um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me or Jane. What are like the GCSE and A level like entry requirements, or is there any, are there any? Um, it tends to be if you're mathematical minded, mm -hmm. so there aren't. It depends what firm you go to as well. If you're looking at a bigger firm, there may be a lot more stricter requirements. For a smaller firm, um, like ourselves. If you're doing maths or business, you've obviously got that brain. It's not so much that you have to, things you learn in maths, a lot of it won't be, obviously the general mathematical ability is important, but specific, you know, statistics and all that, you're not going to be applying that when you're an accountant. Um, but doing those subjects and having those subjects named on your form indicates you have that kind of brain. So if that makes sense. So. Yeah, you won't be applying stuff, but that's the sort of subject we'd be thinking, oh, it'd be a positive. So it'd be, oh, they're doing maths or business, they're obviously interested, thinking that way.